LS Dunes, past lives. Yes, the analysis is complete. Nitro Boost is activated. We're not holding back. Yeah, thank you for stopping by. If you're new here, that's what we do. We do a lot of music talks, vinyl shootouts, stuff like that. But I probably sat and listened through every single vinyl variant three times through. The engines have been revved. We've primed the pump. LS Dunes. We've gotten down the hatches. Past lives. We had some hiccups along the way, but we overcame because there's a ton of pressings. Every single variant, some even overseas, from their web store, from the exclusives. Some kind people online were able to sell some of these to me, some of these I pre-ordered. So needless to say, of all the things that I do, I mean, doing the vinyl shootouts is one of the most exciting parts of doing this because there's not a lot of people talking on Discogs yet. This is a brand new band. It just came out in 2022. We'll get into more about it. Today, this is the end of the line. All of these, except the new one, which I literally just got this morning, have been ultrasonically cleaned. I just wanted a nice baseline to really understand what's going on. But there are nuances and differences between these. They're actually pretty glaring, A, being them. This is a band with Easter eggs surrounding them, notoriety, mystique, references to other bands. There's a Lost Souls comic strip, tons of podcasts and interviews already. Them shrugging every time they hear the word <laughs> supergroup. Their font, which I think is like a free font on defont.com. I've seen Nails use this. The band Nails has used this font. I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. I have no idea. Just noticed that. But I just got to stop and say thanks for coming by. And I'm really here to talk to you about the clear cut differences and coolness between all these amazing pressings of this amazing record by this brand new super group. All right, let's get into it though. Let me give you a little history about this band. You know, they came out in 2022. There were all these rumors circulating and certain band members talking about it, but certain one's identities being left out, but it was released on November 11th, 2022. Members Anthony Green, Circus Survive, Seosin, Travis Stever, Coheed & Cambria, Frank Iro. So we're talking about Mike and Michael Romance, Tucker Rule, and Tim Payne. Thursday, each one of these five representing the five members past lives, not just a side project or a super project or whatever. These are just LS dudes. And they've been talking about doing a project all the time, but now they've actually completed it and they love it. They're super proud of it and they had to get out there and play it. So now they're touring. It's exciting. There's songs on here that are instant bangers. It's a very gratifying listen over time as well. So call the fans Lost Souls. They really do put a lot into into this and you can hear it how they really let the drums sit back tucker rule talks about him trying to be as intuitive as possible and not as technical which really does shine the guitars are really playful with it and the bass is locked in the groove and that's due a lot to uh, the fact that drummer and bass is both from the same band something to be said for that for sure but also i mean having a front man like anthony green that dude has some magic energy and they talk about the magic factor or the talent factor that he brings to the table. They also said that, you know, it wouldn't be a band without him. You know, it's cool to see how much they value every single member of the band. Obviously, the notoriety of My Chemical Romance, too. Let's not forget Frank Iro of My Chemical Romance. But it's really cool to see all the fan art and all the stuff that comes along with the great community that has really been surging around the past few months since they started touring and playing the shows. But I gotta tell you, the vinyl is an experience in and of itself that you're not gonna wanna miss if you are a fan. And there's a few that you could probably, you know, uh, just pass on. And there's a few that you really probably, you need to hunt down. There was a cool little video circulating when the bands just started to get the vinyl in for the first time looking through them. Oh, no. oh, dude, this one's sick too. And um, oh, it was no. just so cool to see their reactions to seeing <laughs> all the amazing variants. <laughs> oh, boy. Immediately. Because of so Martin? Yo. Oh, what a crazy thought. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> they were just looking through them and laying out. <laughs> Laying out every single color variant across the floor just to check them all out and see what was going on. Really neat. It was meta because I'm like getting your phone taken from you. <laughs> but I bet the band doesn't even know which one of these sounds the greatest, even if they've seen them all in hand. So let's do this for everybody. I've done a few vinyl shootouts now already in the past, and I really want to go even more 
in depth on this one. Some of them disappointing because they're all amazing looking in their own way, but they're <laughs> There's some heartbreakers in there too. After hearing some of the good sounding ones, a couple of the cool looking ones, I don't know if they're gonna stay on my shelf just because of the simple fact that they just don't sound as good. I still might keep it anyway. They're so cool. Regardless, seven, eight, nine. We got nine variants here. I'm gonna go through them in order of best-ish to worst-ish. Again, these aren't definitive comparisons, but this is every single variant. And this is the honest truth about what my pressings, at least, sound like, most likely yours too. Shall we? Let's start with the best pressing. So this is the European edition. It's the bubblegum pink. It's uh, winner of the best sounding. It's loudest. It's probably the most dynamic, yet balanced. And service noise is at it like a bare minimum. And between songs, I mean, sometimes it's raspy hardly noticeable. I'm going to double check this as I go, but the information in the dead wax and the matrix run out right here is completely different than any other pressing variant. So you will know for sure if the sound wasn't enough for you. Uh, it's the best pressing. It's got a nice sharp edge, but it's smooth. Somehow it's sharp and smooth at the same time. I don't understand, but it's uh, same center, le uh, actually, wait a second. Wait a second. Yes, it is the same center labels. Uh, possibly lighter or darker color variation on the labels and, and this as well. Um, I'll just go ahead and show you. This is the one from the EU. And this is the one I got today. Now, it's very subtle, but you can tell right there. This one's more saturated and brighter, and the one is definitely darker, more matte, and flat. Um, also, the, the thickness and sturdiness of the cardboard is about the same, but I will say this one feels more like Amazon cardboard, which I'm okay with because, <laughs> because it sounds so good. And the clear hype sticker, I will go to that in just a minute because that one's probably the best one you can get in the U.S. at the best price. Now, something to note with these two, your inner is a little bit thicker too. Same inner, same information. Got a nice little shine to it. And on the back as well, you can tell a little bit of a shine. And a spine comparison as well. That's not a lighting difference. It is just a lighter pressing. Lighter color, better saturation in the EU. And this is a common thing. Uh, I did this in, I showed it in the uh, Tyco shootout. This is the European. This is the American. Just a little bit more there. But what they also did in the European version is it's got more bass. It's got just a little bit more pleasant dynamics. I was going to say this, so you will get the insert with this, but on some of the European versions, there's a I believe foil stamped or foil some sort of print. Another insert that you will get that's rare, some of these also have uh, alternate covers or stuff like that too available in the US, but this one, um, there's a picture available on, on Discogs. This pressing is very widely available in, in Europe and available for import, that's how I got it. Can't remember which shops, but support your local record stores, no matter where you are, oh, or even if they're local or not. Great sounding. This really is one of the best sounding ones. It's not a cool bubblegum pink, but the weakness of this one is the fact that it is not really available in the US. It still has some of that inner groove distortion that's worse than the one I'm about to tell you about. But we're again, we're splitting hairs here. This is a great pressing of this album, the bubblegum pink. All right, you ready for the next one? Let's gently put this behind me. Yeah, more LS dudes. <laughs> I got this, no joke, today. This arrived thanks to a Discogs member for putting the listing up and uh, letting us know that it's available at Best Buy. This is apparently a retail version as noted by the bottom barcode. On the hype sticker, 
it does in fact say translucent orange. Now you'll notice you can't see my hand. All the way around. This ain't translucent. I can barely even see the, through the spindle hole. Um, it's a tangerine. It's a opaque tangerine. That's the truth. It is amazing. I really didn't expect much. I expected this to sound as good as maybe some of the ones they put up on their web store or whatever, just like generic ones. No, this thing sounds amazing. I'm keeping this 100%. It's still available at Best Buy for 20 bucks. Unbelievable. Now, this is not to be confused with the Amazon one and their old web store one, which I'll go through in a minute. A comparison of the color. You can definitely note the differences. This is the Orange Crush. I bought this at a local record store. Shout out to them for selling me this a day early. Uh, called me up and told me they had it if I wanted it on the Thursday before it came out. Super stoked to listen to this a day before it came out. And you can see, yeah, this is definitely an orange crush. It's darker, and this is the tangerine. This is the Best Buy retail one. Uh, the orange doesn't sound great, orange crush. Now, it does have a cool other element, and that is the card slip case, which might be worth it to you. You do not get that on the retail tangerine version. Now, when I was gonna talk about the 180 gram one next, I had every everything prepared to talk about because it was my next favorite one. <laughs> 180 gram more bass, I think is is there and audible on this, but this is the least sibilant. This is my favorite. This is super clean. Like we're talking no surface noise and this is not ultrasonically clean. I ultrasonically cleaned everything else. I didn't even brush clean. I didn't pre-brush before I dropped the needle. I mean, that was dumb. And it sounds that good. I, I'm blown away with this pressing. It's outstanding. It's still available. Go get it if you haven't. I think it matches it a little bit better than the Orange Crush. Orange Crush does look good, like it's darker. I like this bright orange. It's more fun. Bright tangerine orange, love it. Yeah, I haven't even peeled off this resealable outer yet. All right, that's good to go. Next one down. Got the 180 gram. Yeah, this one's amazing, especially the packaging. It just matches up so beautifully. The other ones are stamped. Yeah, it's looks identical to me. Completely flat, really silent, very light crackle, sometimes a tick, hardly at all. Yeah, I did say it has the best bass, and it does. It's just got more bass there. Super clear treble too in top. Do not forget that. Um, but it's not the absolute best. And you know what? These are going for a pretty couple pennies now, which is gonna scare a lot of people away. And as great as it sounds, there are other ones you can get and none of these are definitive again. Barco basically denoting that it's black. I do feel like the fact that it comes in one of these, some of the other ones too with the, the card, they give you a nice uh, resealable, which I appreciate. But let me show you the sliding card this is the first one we've talked about with one. Slide it out. Yeah. The same identical jacket. The same inner sleeve. Lyrics logo on the bottom. Looks great. Let me show you. Pretty sick. It will attract a few fingerprints, but even that looks good by itself. Definitely deserves its place. 180 gram pressings are usually great sounding. This type of music that's not really audiophile or whatever you want to call it, I, I just feel like this may not be the absolute best route to go, even as amazing as it does sound, especially in the bass. Love the packaging though, it's super sick. Huge fan of the black. All right, what do we got next? So this is the Revolver Magenta Black. Same deal. Got some really cool marbling. I'll make sure to show you the complete packaging. Oh. 
first I thought it would look weird, but look how good that goes with the card. Scorpion 2. They call it magenta, but it's it's more of like a reddish, burgundyish, orangish kind of blend together. I will say I, I absolutely hate Revolver. I didn't want to get this pressing. Revolver is uh, notorious for doing cash grabs. Very, very limited runs of stuff. Not knowing much more than that about Revolver, uh, I sought this out looking for a decent sounding pressing. And I did receive that. I mean, we're talking very, very light surface noise and some of the quiet parts, maybe some occasional ticks. It is silent. In comparison and just one tearing on the song blender toward the end of the side a uh intergroup distortion on a as well but not as bad on b this is b super great bass as well comparative to that of the 180 gram not quite as much though whoa whoa <laughs> uh, siblings is pleasant it's not bad it's still super clear treble and and top super clear and, you know, at the expense of maybe some upper dynamics. I definitely prefer that tangerine over there uh, more than this, which is amazing because this was one of my favorite sounding ones, even though I may not like the variant as much. It's resemblant of the Bloodshot. Now, Bloodshot is clear with red. This is red clear with black. Yeah, same deal. Absolutely no quality difference in the packaging. Final thing to note with this one, it will come with the barcode indicating that it's Revolver and it's Magenta. This was one of the first variants I saw pop up online when they announced the drop of this uh, on vinyl. I think it was the first to sell out, but I'm not sure on that one. That's the Magenta. Next up as far as sound. I would be happy with the Urban Outfitters exclusive. Now it's also on sale. There's the hype. It's 20 bucks, 1998. It was 27 or something before. So definitely the cheapest variant. Still available, limited to 3000. Pretty much all the rest of them were not limited to that many. So now you will get a couple different things with this. I don't even believe I've opened this up. Uh, so we'll open it up together, but you get a very uh, similar to the tangerine. You'll get the clear hype sticker that says LS Dunes with limited edition packaging, hype sticker clear, and the Urban Outfitters ghost marble, black and yellow smoke. You also get another couple little stickers on the bottom indicating just like stock stuff for the store. Yeah, I haven't opened this up since I received it. Very cool Apex card and even stronger smell. A lot of these inners will come seam split on the bottom edge. It's just an unfortunate nature of shipping them in these things and they bounce around, they get scuffed up sometimes too. That's it, identical. You know, I keep wanting to think like, does it compare to some of the other presses as far as jacket color? And um, you know, looking at these side by side, it's the same deal. Just a little bit more, again, on the European one and these American ones, just a little more color. This one is one of the coolest looking variants. It's got the clear, clear splatter, clear or clear with marbling, got green, like acid yellow green, cool blackish, blackened blue swirl. I don't know, that just looks really, really neat. As, as a piece and spinning around you can imagine as well super flat i don't think it goes with the packaging the best but definitely the most uh unique um yeah needless to say it's it's one of the coolest looking ones it's great sounding you know light surface noise and some of the quiet parts but super great transients and that's something i noticed pulling up the actual waveforms uh slightly inferior treble and bass though to others I'm not really sure why, because like I said, it does have good dynamics and good transients, but you know, better bass than some of the, uh, the lower ones we're about to talk about too. It does have good bass. And I noticed that today when I spun it again, you know, sibilance is pleasant and balanced as well and not too harsh. So I can recommend this, especially if it's available at a great deal. It's the cheapest one. Uh, you know, if the best buyer, the retail one sells out, this would be a, a nice close second for the best budget one. 
again, by no means the best definitive one, but I would give it the most unique award and not bad uh, for the price. Vinyl is getting super ridiculous. We got double layers of protection for this one. A Serban Outfitters Ghost Marble Black and Yellow Smoke. Now, we're at Orange Part 2. This one is <laughs> the indie store. Uh, but it's also available at Amazon, so it's not retail. It's not really indie. Got the same inner. That really cool card. Same jacket. And something to distinguish it. Oh, the bottom barcode. It says Wide orange crush so this is the wide wide color variant i would say and uh there's something to be said for this because it's super cool it goes with the packaging the orange crush uh, looks great i mean just looking at it like that it looks great along with the cover doesn't it the clear hype sticker limited edition packaging orange crush vinyl cool i did like it same yeah, i'm looking at the same stamping run outs on both sides uh, flat loud and dynamic um you know i think the weakness of this one is the surface noise it does have some medium surface noise and in the quiet parts and that's kind of annoying because you can definitely notice it um inner groove distortion is also very noticeable which makes this kind of a, a weak one i was really looking forward to this one especially having received it and listened to this variant first from my local record store the day before it came out super excited to do it it still blew me away though, um, you know, after first listen. But noticeably confused upper treble, treble I would say. Um, and that's the best way to describe it. It is kind of confused and, and mixed together and not as clear and clean to chew. But again, very confused upper treble. I personally won't be keeping this. Now, if I could get this one at a good price again, that might change my mind. But. Just knowing both how available this is and the bad experience in comparison to all of these other ones that I've had. All these bottom ones are going to be about in the same league in sound, uh, both with their unique differences. But it is still cool that you get the card with it because it really does kind of bring all the packaging together having that. Yeah, that's the Orange Crush. Now this next one is a super cool variant. You'll notice that it matches up very nicely with the cover as well, this custard as it is known as. You know, I looked at it at first and I thought, maybe it's a beige, maybe it's a yellow. And I pulled it out. This says D to C custard. D to C, whenever you see that, that's gonna be direct to consumer. Notice it doesn't even have a hype, a hype sticker on the clear plastic, just that with the barcode on the bottom. Now, exact same, but check out how well that goes you know it the cover is more of a tan beige it goes together just like it was made for each other uh it's not the best sounding it's got some noisy silent parts uh, but very few pops at all which is awesome which makes it a super smooth listen um so if you're listening to it in the background you're not going to notice it at all super great some of you know very few pops at all in comparison to any of the other pressings but it does have that light constant surface noise. Not as bad as the uh, Orange Crush, but some louder noise between, kind of in between surface noise. Greater feeling bass, but cluttered upper treble makes it kind of feel obnoxious as well. And uh, you will, you won't notice it as much starting out, especially if you just the only one you have. But as you get toward the inner groove distortion, it does make a difference because it will get kind of pushed together, especially toward Permanent Rebellion and uh, blender on side a so hey cool packaging really liked what they were trying to do with this one just a big fan of that custard color in general and um you know definitely worth a shot your pressing might be better than mine definitely not the best one i have so it's going over there and uh as we get toward the bottom i would say don't lose heart because this is the blue marble serenity variant Beautiful blue, beautiful blue with the light white and the dark blue flex in it. And the black and the orange, I mean, black, orange, blue, tan, it, it goes together. 
it actually does kind of go together. It's still available, it's very available as well. Now, it's not quiet pressing, but the low mids on this one are there. It's the most sibilant. It's the absolute most offensive sounding pressing, and it's ironic because it's called the Serenity variant. The edge is kind of, it's just not smooth on the edge. It just seems rushed. Um, it's definitely slightly flatter sounding. The, the inner groove distortion, what happens is on this particular pressing with the inner groove distortion is it just loses intensity. And um, that's terrible for rock and roll. On Blender, it just, just kind of destroys it. Uh, plus the louder constant surface noise on the end of the sides, it's just that really just weird surface noise, loud stuff. Uh, that you won't hear during most of the tracks, but you will hear in between and at the end. Man, this one had a weird surface noise on B. Um, it, it, like every half rotation it has surface noise. Um, takes audible, but no loud pops. So you were warned. Very easy to get and unfortunately not great sounding. Cool looking though, if you just want a cool blue copy of this, you got it. Uh, if you just put it on the wall to hang up for art, okay. Looks cool. Um, now we got the Bloodshot, which is a clear with a red smoke. Very similar to the Magenta. I'm gonna put them up side by side. What they're calling the Magenta, that is, but it's definitely more of a burgundy. Red ones wanted to be buddies. Very similar looking from a distance. Both have the red. Now this one, it's very transparent, noticeably clear more like a bloodshot eye and this one is definitely more of a quote-unquote magenta or burgundy deep red kind of in the light maybe i see the burgundy but not really with this bloodshot pressing you got i would say decent sound uh low sub uh, it's confusing why why there would be a little more sub not bass it's just sub is like that kind of muddy woofiness slightly inferior bass which is funny because the sub was more there but low mids are the worst and that was noticeable i mean we're talking somewhere in the order of two to four db worse they're just weaker uh five db less than the magenta right here um and we're talking below 40 hertz and uh 200 hertz to one kilohertz that's kind of the low mids where they live very light crackle it's present though and uh very occasional pops uh, touch more noticeable than most other pressings uh, and again, all of these ultrasonically clean. You're, just, you're still getting the pops and the clicks straight out of the ultrasonic. It's just that pishy upper treble that you're getting. Lower end pressings, not as much this one. This one has pretty good treble on the magenta. Pishy upper treble just doesn't make it worth it to me, even as cool as it looks with the cool swirl. Yeah, this one, uh, I, I don't believe it's in stock anymore, but not anywhere near my top pick. Something they did maybe slightly differently, it doesn't come with a card, and it comes with a barcode, direct-to-consumer bloodshot on the bottom. Yeah, you will get the insert with the cool LS Dunes logo on it. We just went through every single pressing of this. And again, what a great album. Amazing vinyl variants. Really well done packaging. It all goes together. There's all the spines side by side. I personally do predict that you're going to want a copy of this just for the fact that it will go up in volume. Plus, it's an amazing listen. It's going to keep you hooked from start to finish. And I got more new stuff coming in the future. Super cool vinyl. Ellis Dunes Past Lives. Fantastic work of art, incredibly addictive debut, complete joy to listen to. I'm really loving listening to it, doing so over and over. Well done to all involved on a good, on a job bloody well achieved. Roll on January 23, where I'll be able to see you perform it live. Hashtag past lives. Really cool. Fan reaction, yeah, nothing but excitement and positivity pretty much across the board. Really good reviews for it as well, popping up online. 100 users talked about it, and 11 critics reviewed it. At least on album of the year. I think on Rate Your Music. Not bad at all. I would say um, about the same.
meets its somewhat high expectations. I mean, I would say high expectations, you know, it's really hard to separate the supergroup thing out of it because these are musicians that have been around. We're talking two decades. We've come to expect a certain level of musical goodness from these guys, and they delivered the male vocals, energetic, passionate, melodic, rhythmic. 43 minutes, 21 seconds, 4, 3, 2, 1. It's a nice sequence. It doesn't overstay its welcome. It's just the bangers. Every single track in here is a banger. You know, I gave it a 90 just saying um, when they wanted it to sound like the cool elements from each, uh, you know, each of the groups represented without being individually and heavily identifiable. They 100% accomplished that. And I, I do still feel like, you know, even though they didn't want it to feel like it's like, oh, that's a that band thing. You can still hear where it came from. Like it's in a good way. You can still... I think there is a level of recognizableness that that makes it makes it catchy. It makes it memorable as well. I mean, there was almost this expectation to me of like, oh, it maybe well, if it's too much of a Thursday thing or too much of a Circa thing or too much of a My Kim thing. No, they really did accomplish that, and it is the strong points from each of the artists. I think so many moments that you'll notice the Thursday Circa or My Kim, Coheed, Seosin. Or even Frank and Anthony's solo stuff. I really feel like they fully realized themselves on the first go. I mean, on the super group, if you want to call it that. But more like super cool dudes in a super band for the ages. An all-time post-emo album. Post-emo. <laughs> is that is that a thing? It is now. Frankie and Tucker argue about, it's not emo. Oh yeah, we are emo. But wouldn't it be so amazing to be like, it's punk rock. You know what I mean? But no, people don't call it punk rock. People call it <laughs> yeah, I think it's just, it's just rock and roll. Subgenre of a subgenre of a subgenre. You and I think that. Yeah. I don't know. Right? Because we're in it. <laughs> Maybe. No, no, we're emo. All the labels aside, for whatever you want to call it, like, I'm trying to find another band of this kind of notoriety that sounds like this. I don't think there is one. But they're not even resting on their laurels, and that's what's really great to see. And the community coming around this stuff, and, and the great promotion stuff that they've done with the Tucker Thursday. What's up, y'all? This is Tucker, and it is, in fact, Tucker Thursday. It, he did this every Thursday, even on tour. And it's just great just to see the interaction that they're trying to do. Keep it going uh, through a Monday through Monday, week round thing, you know? <laughs> singing gray veins together. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> Man, there's so much cool energy around the band. It seems like uh, they're making special merch here, just whether it's drawing it in or, you know, just coming out to the tour, buying a record, a shirt, a poster. It's cool. It's, um, you know, interviews of them saying, you know, for a lot of us in this band, it's a second chance. Just cool little stuff they're doing to keep it alive. Little rig rundown videos. More Tucker Thursdays. Tattoos everywhere. Just really cool to see what people are coming up with. And, um, love song for the lost soul. We are meant to change. Make me new again. It, it feels right. It's just exciting. He posted this, and this this got me excited too, because this was a, of all the different vinyl records people are posting. Signed one right there, signed alternate artwork on the record. That looks really cool. That one might, in fact, be the one I'm talking about, the Best Buy one, Acai. It's just the numbered Obi thing. It's not even Japanese, y'all. They're European. You may have seen people discussing the acai gimmick online. It is essentially just one of the additions, one of the variants. Acai version is just a regular edition or a, a very in stock limited edition with some kind of OB slapped on it and numbered. It's no different. It's not really supporting any local record store and it's not really a different variant. Uh, in this case, it was the bubblegum pink one available in the 
in the European zones with an OB slapped on the edge. <clears throat> These have already sold for 70, 80, 90 bucks. Not the cultural appropriation or whatever. I mean, there's worse instances of that. I think this is just offensive for the fact that people think you're paying for something limited or different when in reality, they just literally feeding into the FOMO of a very available, you know, almost for a year now, a variant. If you're out there looking for a variant, I mean, there's no sense in even looking that direction. There's plenty of other stores that are just doing the same version. It really is like a bootleg version. I've talked about it in other videos, so I don't want to go into it too much, but just know that they're doing it to move units. Now there's the new noise flexi, the cassette. So that's the full bundle. There's the foil print. Laying it out like that does make it look really cool, right? And now that I've shown you every single pressing of it, I hope this just cuts through and just to find one for you or or just to maybe check this band out for the first time if you like this kind of stuff normally but just had never heard of this or flew on you know flew under your radar for some reason or if you're a now a long time fan <laughs> of less than a year just vibing out and enjoying this stuff it's just great to see it i just i'm happy to see that everyone else is enjoying it just as much as i have and it's blown me away Oh, you may have actually seen this too. They were featured in New Noise Magazine. Um, not only were they featured in New Noise Magazine and LS Dunes, but they actually included Flexidus. I have two of them because one of them broke. Actually, both of them broke. I didn't put it in a protective thing and, and it jammed back behind one of these Zoop cubes and got bent. So uh, both of these flexes are pretty much unplayable, but it's a cool collector's piece regardless. Interview, it literally feels like I'm 18 again. It's a cool little write-up about the band. And I just remembered production by Will Yip. Will Yip has produced the like Circa Survive and tons of other great indie rockish emo bands, rock and roll bands. I want to credit the production. Um, if you watch me talk about my favorite songs of 2022, it's everything I hoped it would be. Another band that is turning out to be everything I'd hoped they'd be, cutting edge emo punk that translates to a pop audience. Talked about LS Dunes and I was talking about how I thought it was a perfect album, but I thought some of the mixing choices were a little bit, not the perfect, most world's most perfect mix, but I still think it's a perfect album. I think I've changed my mind, especially on Bomb Squad. And I feel like just because the vo vocals are pushed back a little bit, even Permanent Rebellion, just a little bit back behind the instruments, I really do think it makes it feel more full, ironically. I think with too many things poking out in a rock and roll mix, I think it just loses togetherness and it they really did something special by incorporating elements of all the different previous bands that have been thursday circus or my chemical romance coheed and cambria seos and even you can hear each one of those elements and pick it out in the mix of, of the songs even like a oh that's a circus survive bridge sounds like a little run that they did in thursday my chemical romance guitar licks stuff like that coheed and cambria two guitar licks it really does a great job of showcasing each of the band members' special talents. And I think it still gets a 10 out of 10 for me. I'm just, certain things haven't grown on me over the, oh my goodness. Yeah, those flexes are gonna be crap. But certain things haven't grown on me over the years, especially in this genre that's super oversaturated with tons of good stuff. Um, this is, <laughs> mm. wow. Okay, yeah. thank you guys for coming in today. It just really means a lot that you would spend any amount of time checking out the vinyl variants, checking out my channel. Uh, yeah, if you like it, you can stick around. I'll be here, I'll come back, and I uh, hope to see you back here too, but either way, you need, you need to, to keep, keep on, on grooving, grooving your way. way.